So in our last lecture, we looked at the sets in Java, how we can use them in our codes. In this lecture, we'll look at the maps in Java. The maps are also data structures that we can use in Java. We'll look at their functionalities, what we can use them for, and how we would be able to use them in our Java codes. So a map basically is a container, and all it does is to store collections of objects in the key value pairs. And for each key that the map stores, its corresponding value is likewise stored. So these keys that we are talking of, they cannot be duplicated in the map. Each key is unique, though the values could be duplicated. So when we have the key and its corresponding value that are stored in the map, they are referred to as an entry. So each is referred to as an entry. And the keys that we are talking of in the map, they are more like indexes, and they enable fast retrieval, deletion, and updating of content in the map using each key. Java provides for us three classes of the maps that we can use. We have the hash maps, the linked hash maps, and the tree map. However, in this lecture, we'll only look at the hash maps. Students are advised to learn the linked hash map and the tree hash maps on their own. As we can see on the slide, this is how the hash map, which will be the focus of this class, is structured. So inside the hash map, we have what is referred to as a key and its corresponding value stored. So the two, the key and the corresponding value form what is referred to as the entry. The hash map basically stores collections of objects using the key value pair. And as we can see illustrated on the slide, each entry has a key and its corresponding value. So if we have a hash map and we want to access a particular value in the hash map, we should be able to access it using this key. If we do not know the key, we would not be able to access the value in the hash map. And as we learned previously, hash maps cannot have duplicated keys. The values, however, can be duplicated, but the keys are always unique. So they are hash maps because they use a technique called hashing. Hashing basically is a technique for assigning shorter unique codes to variables or objects using what is referred to as a hashing function or algorithm. This will be treated in detail under data structures and algorithms. So the shorter unique codes created using the hashing function helps in indexing and faster searching. Because of the hashing, the order in which we put items into the hash marks are not the same order in which they are stored. So how do we create a hash map and use it in our Java codes? The syntax is simple. We need to use the map constructor in creating our hash map. First of all, we need to declare what type of element we want to store as a key. Is it an integer, string, double, boolean? And we also declare the type of element we want to store as a value. Similarly, is it an integer, string, boolean? whichever we want. We need to give our map a name so that we can reference it or access it in our code. So whenever we want the map, we need to call it by the name we are giving to it. So when we say new hash map, we are telling the map constructor that we want a hash map, not a tree map. So for example, if we want to create a hash map that will store student names and their max, we know that the student name is a string, so we can simply create a hash map called student map. And here we are specifying that the key is a string and the value is an integer. So this basically will create a hash map with a key type as a string and the corresponding value type as an integer. We can create hash maps to see with all the process. 
For example, we can create a hash map with keys as string and values as another hash map, arrays, lists, sets, integers, and what have you. We'll play with some of these in our practicals to see how it goes. So assuming we have created a hash map and we want to insert content into our hash map, how do we do that? Once we have created the hash map and we've given it a unique name, we need to call the name of the hash map we created. So in our previous example, assuming the name is map reference, we need to use the dot put map reference dot put what element are we storing as the key and what element are we storing as the value. So in our example, where we created a student map, if we say student map put John Mensa and set nine, we we'll simply insert the content John Mensa as the key and set nine as the value. We'll play with some of the methods that the hash map provides during our practicals. So we now have our hash maps. We've been able to insert content into the hash map. How do we print this content out? In our console or how do we access this content for our specific use so assuming we want to print the content out to the console or wherever we want it to be printed we can just use a system.out.print line and it will print the content out for us so for example if we use the system.out.print line student map to print all the content in the student map the key and its corresponding um, volume. You can likewise iterate through the hash map to print out the key and the corresponding value or to access them for whatever purpose that you would be using it for. So in our practicals, we will look at how we can do that. So during our practicals, we would play with um, this table. We are assuming that this is um, a list of students the student name will be the key and their exam marks will be the values that we want to store in our hash map. So for example, student called me has three exam scores, 78, 68, and 82, and the name of the student is me. So me becomes the key and the values for the map becomes the exam map. So that is it. For the theory, we would now go to the particle to see how it goes.